Hi, my name is Caitlin Jones and I'm doing my first informative speech on how to manage communication disorders. Before we learn about managing communication disorders, we first need to learn about what communication disorders are. Communication disorders are issues that are related to how well a person communicates verbally and non-verbally. Communication is crucial in everyday life, no matter how young or old you are. Speech, which is a way a person expresses themselves or their voice, and language, which are the words that are signed or spoken, are the main concepts of communication. In order to understand how to manage communication disorders, you first need to understand the causes. There are many things that lead to communication disorders, but some of the things that I would like to focus on are traumatic brain injury, cleft lip or palate, and childhood apraxia of speech. According to a scholarly source, over 90,000 people who have traumatic brain injuries have permanent issues which are related to their accident. This can mean permanent loss of communication skills. Cleft lip or palate is another communication another cause for communication disorder. When the child is born with cleft lip, they will normally undergo surgery within the first three to six months. After the child undergoes surgery, there is still a slight remaining, remaining communication disorder. Childhood speech apraxia is when the child's brain has problems with coordinating oral movement, which is needed to make syllables into words. For the most part, speech apraxia is uncommon. However, there are cases in the United States. One very common way to begin to manage communication disorders is to start seeing a speech therapist. Speech therapy helps the child or young adult learn new vocabulary and improve with their verbal communication as a whole. Some effective ways that speech therapy takes place is in a small group or a classroom setting. Overall, speech therapy is used for speech apraxia, stuttering, or problems with flow of the person's speech. Another upside of speech therapy is that most of the time a speech pathologist is provided by the school system for the student. That way the student can improve their communication skills while they are at school rather than having to travel to a doctor's office or another place prior to his or her school day. This is very convenient for not only students but parents as well. Speech therapy will help children to become more verbal and improve their overall verbal communication skills. Not only will it help with verbal communication but it will also help with their problem solving skills. Speech therapy will also help improve the child's self-esteem. Ways to manage long-term communication disorders. One option that is still available is speech therapy. Many people go to speech therapy young and old. Some examples of these are a person who has had a stroke or loses some of their communication skills. They are referred to speech therapists prior to their hospital stay. This ensures that they will regain majority of, if not all, of their communication skills that they have lost. Some other outreach programs for speech therapy are also community-based and can be very beneficial to not to all adults struggling with communication disorders. Lastly, the family needs to be involved in the intervention with the child's speech. The speech therapy shouldn't just take place at school or in the doctor's office. By continuing at home, this will hopefully speed up the process of intervention.